Hello, happy crocheters. This is Lindsay from windingyardcrochet.com, and today is lesson two of our Tunisian crochet course, and we're going to be going over common mistakes in Tunisian crochet. So here I have our sample from lesson one, and in lesson one we learned how to do the foundation row, the Tunisian simple stitch, and how to bind off, which I've ripped out at this point. But let's just say you finish up your sample, and it doesn't look like this. Instead, what it looks like is this. Kind of long on one side, little taller on one side, shorter on the other side. But if this is what your sample looks like, that is completely okay. There's a few issues that beginning Tunisian crocheters deal with. One of them is that their very first stitch is really, really loose. And the other one is that when we chain one at the beginning of the return pass, that chain gets pulled really tight. And the end project looks like this. And it is true that depending on the size of the project, you could potentially block out and make this into a square, but we're going to look at some other ways to fix these issues. So the first thing we're going to address is that very loose first stitch. What you can do, of course, is keep a tighter tension on your yarn during those first few stitches. But if you're really struggling with this, go ahead and pull that loop up to the smaller part of your hook. While we work our first three stitches, we're just going to work in the smaller part of our hook. That's going to make our tension tighter. All of our stitches on that row actually share tension, so don't worry about these being too tight, because as we work the rest of the row, they will loosen up a little bit, but still that first stitch will remain nice and tight against your hook just because we worked the first three stitches nice and tight. So I'm just finishing up my forward pass, and now we're going to take a look at that tight chain at the beginning of our return pass. So here's what tends to happen. We make our chain one, and then we go to do the rest of our return pass. But as we're pulling on that yarn, that chain one gets pulled really tight, and that makes this side of our work shorter. So what we're going to do is work our last stitch, and then when we work our chain one, we are going to pinch that chain one so that it doesn't become any smaller. Then you can yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and about now you can let go of that chain and it should hold its shape. But if you're really struggling with this, then what we're going to want to do is pull back, work that last stitch again, pull that last loop up just a little bit, then we can chain one and hold that stitch as we work the return pass. It's gonna be up to you and your attention on which way you need to go about this but definitely holding that chain helps make that section a little bit taller and helps it even out with your looser front stitch. So you'll just need to practice with both sides and find a tension or a way on both sides to get a square looking piece for you. So now that we know how to square up our project, let's look at some other things that can make our project a little wonky. Here we have a vertical line, and you can follow it all the way up the project. Jump over two, and you have another vertical line. But when you go down the middle, you'll see that this vertical line disappears. This is because we skipped a stitch. I actually skipped a stitch twice in that row, just to help point it out. You can see another little hole here and here. You can see those vertical lines come up and stop. That is because we skipped a stitch on the forward pass. So let me go ahead and show you what this looks like while you're crocheting. So here I've worked a few stitches. The next vertical bar that I should work into is right here, but if I skip it and work into the next vertical bar, sometimes you don't have a very big gap in between your loops on your stitch, and it could be really hard to catch what you've done you probably won't catch it until later when you're several rows down the way. 
The bad thing is the only way to fix this is to rip out your project, go back down to that row and fix your mistake. You can increase later up the project, but again, that vertical line will disappear and it's gonna be pretty noticeable, especially in the simple stitch. Another way you can lose a stitch is during your return pass. Instead of yarning over and pulling through two loops, what if you yarn over and pull through three? Then you're going to have two vertical bars that are gonna be angled towards each other. The good news is that we can fix this on the next forward pass. On a small sample like this, it's not a big deal. We could rip it out and fix it. But if you're working a huge blanket, you don't wanna rip that out. So let me go ahead and show you how to fix this. I am going to start my forward pass as usual, and it is possible you may fix this without even noticing. As I pull up my loops, I am going to reach those vertical bars, and since my vertical bars are still there, here's my two slanted bars, I can still pull up a loop in each vertical bar, and that will help straighten out my stitches. This is going to hold them apart and make them look normal. So if you come across this kind of error, you can fix it on your forward pass. So the last thing I wanna to talk to you about is working into our foundation chain and our last stitch. Right here you can see on my foundation chain, the bottom of my row looks very nice. This is because I worked into the back bumps of that foundation chain. This other side doesn't look bad, but it's not worked into the back bumps. It's just worked into the regular chain. You can see how working into the back bumps makes the bottom of your row look much nicer. Also, at the top of this row, we worked into the last stitch correctly. But at the bottom of this row, we worked into that very last stitch as if it's just like every other stitch, only working under one of the vertical bars. And it tends to look a little bit messy because you're starting to see some of the loops from the back of your work. Let me show you what this looks like. Here I'm working my stitch only under the front vertical bar. And if I do that, the edges of my stitches are going to look like the bottom portion of this sample here. And you're going to be able to see the messy backside of my work. But if I work under both vertical bars, you can see I'm under two loops here, yarn over and pull through. I am creating that V look at the edge of my work, and that's going to match all the other sides of my project and give me a nice finished edge. I hope this will help you with some of the issues you might be facing. If it doesn't, make sure to let us know what you're dealing with in the comments below and we will see what we can do to help you. Also, make sure to check out the written portion of this lesson because we're going to be talking about how to tame that dreaded curl.